at theraces.com. Cheltenham Preview, sponsored by labrooks.com. Now, the Friday's the big day for the four-year-olds. It is the Triumph Hurdle, notoriously one of the most difficult races to win. One last year by Catch It. Andy Thornton's here in the studio with me. He's going to be helpfully pointing me in the right direction a little bit later on. But first, let's get the stats from Matt Chapman. It's interesting, isn't it, Luke? I think as a jockey, it probably is difficult to win, and maybe as a trainer as well, because it's so competitive. But year in, year out recently, the market leaders have done very well. Let's check out the stats. Last time out winners have won 13 of the last 14 renewals. So once again, your horse has to be at the top of its game. Horses with at least two wins over hurdles to the name have won 13 of the last 14 renewals. And one thing I would say about this race is, Luke, whereas the other novice hurdles, uh, inexperience didn't seem to matter, in the hustle and bustle for these four-year-olds, experience does seem to count for something, at least. Uh, only one winner since 1996 was rated below 80 on the flat, so you need a class act. That's what that tells us. And the last ten winners all ran over a mile and a half or more on the flat. And again, I think traditionally, although some of the rules in racing, like the sort of two-and-a-half-mile Grand National thing, is probably nonsense. In this race, they always say it's a stamina test. Indeed, a lot of Triumph Hurdle horses have gone on to be World Hurdle horses, although recently different there. Uh, uh, the city horse um, of Philip Hobbs, I'm afraid that one didn't turn into a three-miler, really, did he, before the old boy passed away? And also Catch It, of course, doesn't look an out-and-out -out stare. Uh, for horses have completed the Adonis Triumph Double since 1994. So four horses have completed the Adonis Triumph Double since 1994. That's often a good, good guide. Well, Askazart bounced back with a bit of a penalty kick recently for David Pipe. David Johnson owns. Not sure about him. Uh, Bo Michaels looked good, though, for Adrian McGuinness in Ireland. Binocular looking for J.P. McManus colours there for Nicky Henderson. Gutsy winner last time without setting the world alight. Celestial Halo, surely better than his defeat. Franchuk is the uh, Detroit City here, isn't he, Franchuk? And he's the catch it. He is the one with the form in the book. He fills all the stats correctly. Good flat form, lots of experience, and he loves to jump. Piero Luner is improving, and one in the dark could have a chance as well for Miss S.J. Harty. But... As I've already suggested, I think you need to turn no further than the favourite in this race because Franchik has absolutely every single tick in the right box. We're going to have a look at him in our four guide. And when we come back to Luke and Andrew, I'll be interested to see if they can find any negative for Franchik. I can't find any. Tatum and trying hard to give chase. Then Serabat under the stand side rail. Ashkazar couldn't pick up at all at the last front truck. Asked him to go and he didn't quite find it. Wrapped it with his hind legs. Tatum has got another chance. Then Serabat in third place. He's driving hard now on the leader, Franchuk. 50 yards to go. He's finding enough. And Franchuk will last home. Franchuk, one by three. And now Binocular shaken up quickly, has gone three lengths clear. Crackaway Jack coming to Norman the Great for second. But Binocular at the last seems to have plenty of running left in him. And he's over four lengths clear. Norman the Great and Crackaway Jack are checking second place. As looking over at the big screen, Binocular, Mick Fitzgerald scooting away. Well backed, prominent now in the Triumph Hurdle market, one would imagine. Coming down now to the final flight, one in the dark, the leader from the Ethiopian on the near side of Indian Spring. And inside the last 200 yards, it's one in the dark and Martin Mooney in the lead from Indian Spring and the Ethiopian running up towards the finish. It's one in the dark who's going to win it. And at the final flight, Temlet comes to it and clears well out in front, eight to nine lengths clear of Copsiano, Sartiano, and then height of fury and give it time. But Temlet, at the third time of asking, is going to make no mistake. And another one for Ruby Walsh and Willie Mullins. Temlet clear. It's coming towards the final flight. The Grey Berry has quickened on here, two or three lengths clear. Jumps for last safely. Penticilia took it in second, with Book of Facts back in third. And that's how they're going to finish here, with the Grey Berry making a winning debut over hurdles and winning comfortably. 
and Bo Michael out three in front. Personal column giving chase for Mark Bulger and Sassenta putting in a good run the stand side for David Casey and over the last it's Bo Michael still there in front. Sassenta on the outside of Personal column as they run up towards the finish. Bo Michael is going to make every inch of it and follow up his Leopardstown win. Sentry Duty, who's quickened right away as they approach the final flight. Sentry Duty, great leap at the final flight. Celestial Halo left in the leaders, wake in second. They're 15 lengths clear of Donaldson in third. It's Sentry Duty and Andrew Tinkler who are going right away in the closing stages. Celestial Halo left behind in second. They're 15 lengths ahead of Donaldson in third, but it's a fine return to action for Sentry Duty, who wins by half a dozen lengths. Celestial Halo was second. And the leader on the far side, one in the dark, strongly pressed by Personal Column, the near side, over the last and Personal Column, and Barry Garrity on the near side, one in the dark is battling back on the inside for Martin Mooney, they're racing up to the final 50 yards, Personal Column, one in the dark, the inside, they're going to hit the wire, Personal Column on the near side of one in the dark. Of course, we're looking, as Matt said, for a negative about Franchot. What about the fact that Tony McCoy hasn't yet ridden him? But no, he's got to have an outstanding chance, hasn't he? Uh, he's done everything right, hasn't he? The only, the only negative for me is if by Friday the ground is on the quick side because he won't be quick enough. That would be my feeling. He got beat at Cheltenham earlier in the season on, on good ground um, by an Irish horse. Yeah, um, Tony McCoy, wasn't it? Exactly. And the, the only negative to me is the fact if the ground is riding quick by Friday because the horse is an out-and-out -out stayer on the flat. And you can see in his races, he grinds it out. On good to soft and soft ground, he just, he's not going the best of them coming down the hill, but he's just, when stamina kicks in, when he comes to the last, that's when he's, he's, he's coming, to, coming to the fore, and the others are starting to run out of petrol. So that would be the only negative. If I was a, if I was a betting man, I would wait till the day. He's not going to be any shorter in price. Wait till the day, find out what the ground is. Inevitably, there's going to be comparisons made with Franchuk and uh, last year's winner, Catch It. Are they, they are very similar? Chalk and cheese. Catch It is tiny. Pocket rocket. Franchuk, big, scopy individual. Relentless galloper. Um, both very, very good jumpers. Travel well through the races. But the key to me would be the Catch It has, has more speed. OK, well, we were very impressed on At The Races when we saw Binocular win at Ascot. Mick Fitz looking across in that big screen, watching himself absolutely cruising. Next time, no more than workmanlike, but he's playing the horse with ability. That's right. Probably didn't quite jump quite as well uh, last time out as he did first time at Ascot. Ascot was a... Uh, they, they, they crawled around at Ascot yeah. and he did them for toe. Quickened up very, very well in the straight. Uh, second run, like you said... A little bit flat. It was his second run fairly quickly, yeah. and had to do it. Uh, it, wa it wasn't that impressive, but he got the job done. Didn't jump quite as quick and fluently, but he got a chance to warm up at Ascot. Um, he's a horse I like. He's done nothing wrong. He's won his two races. That's all he can do. Had a real good battle last time. Do you know what? There's an interesting scenario here. I mean, JP Manis, Manis obviously has Franchuk and Binocular. He's not going to want to take on the first. Yeah, with the favourite, with the second favourite, sure. So you'd have thought that one of those will possibly run the supreme novices, wouldn't you? Possibly. I don't know. I think I think they'll both run. Personally. Do you? From from different yards, uh, they're not running from the same. Obviously, the same owner, but uh, like I say, the ground could have a, a factor in this. Okay. Like I say, that, 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 I think it'll come down to that. On the face of things, Paul Nichols has been very very positive about Celestial Halo. He wasn't disappointed when he was beaten at Doncaster. I personally just thought he looked a bit flat to me. Didn't quite impress, but if uh, if Sentry Duty comes out and wins well, earlier in the week, good point. you could well think, well, actually, it wasn't a bad performance from a four-year-old as well. Bearing in mind Sentry Duty, older horse, 106 on the flat. Did you see Celestia Halo win at Newbury? Did see him win at yeah. Newbury. Very impressive. And Paul Nichols was absolutely devastated when he got beat at Doncaster. But it's always a good sign when there's, I think it was 25 lengths back to the third that yeah. day at Doncaster. So and he did say he'd left a, a fair bit to work yeah. on, didn't he? So he's very sweet on Celestial Halo. Could, could end up being, being the value in the race. OK. What about David Pipes or then? Ash Gazar, a horse who's looked very good. And he's also, on occasion, looked very bad. You know, when he got beaten, he just looked, didn't seem to be any legitimate excuse. No, uh, possibly a little bit quirky. At Sandown, had a little bit of a run around when he, when he got in front. Uh, not the most straightforward. 
won that race, wasn't that impressive. Uh, he got the job done, decent flat horse again. But um, just like I say, not just doesn't look the most straightforward individual. The looks to me, the looks uh, the the three in front of him in the betting look a, a little bit more precocious than he does. Yeah, well, if we continue that theme of the English v the Irish, look at the Irish horses. Bo Michael looks to be the most fancied of their runners, but I don't know. You you, you got one in the dark as well, but uh, I, I suspect they're going to be playing second fiddle to one of ours. Per personally, I, I think it revolves around the first three in the betting, Franchuk. Binocular and Celestial Halo. It's an interesting one. Just to actually look down flat ratings, as Matt was saying about those horses. You know, they need a decent eighty. I think Franchuk's only rated sort of sixty odd or something, but he's just one of those horses. A bit like My Silve, a bit like uh, Mar what's the Martin Pipes um, champion hurdle winner, Make a Stand. Make a stand. You know, those sort of horses that have just taken to hurdles, and he looks like one of them. And progressive. He, he was, uh, you know, he's quite a big horse. Looked a little bit weak on the flat. But it's gone from strength and strength over hurdles. From a jockey's point of view, what's it like as a race to ride in? Is it, you know, I mean, nightmare? <laughs> if you're travelling, great. If you're not, a nightmare. Is it? Because the horses are just getting taken off their feet. Um, I rode um, Greyfield in for Mick Shannon. He ended up coming down at the... I got brought down. Uh, but when, when you're riding something, it's travelling, which... Uh, it's, it's a nice race to ride in, but if you're not, as I say, it's a bit of a nightmare. You need a tough, classy, good jumping horse. What's going to win, Andy? At the prices and the ground, I just feel that the ground might end up being too quick for Franchuk. I just feel Celestial Halo might have too much speed. OK, the classy flat performer then, Celestial Halo for Andy in the Triumph. At theraces.com, Cheltenham Preview, sponsored by Labrooks.com.